Great. Well, Claire, thanks ever so much for joining us and for making time to, uh, to speak to me. Um, it's brilliant to be able to do these interviews with um, uh, various churches and pastors that are supporting us in Stockport. So first of all, it'd be really good if you could just tell us a little bit about uh, your family and, and how you um, ended up being a minister at, uh, at Charlottesville. Sure. And first off, greetings, church. Uh, you, I've known and prayed about you for many years since the inception. I'm, I'm grateful for this time. So yeah, I'm Kyle Hoover, the lead pastor of Charlottesville Community Church, and we started off as a church plant about 12 years ago. I moved from Texas with my family, and we started a church that met in our living room and um, with 10 people, and then five of them were my family, and now we've grown way beyond that. So we've seen a good work. We've, we've been where you're at, but that's how it got started. I moved from Texas to Charlottesville, Virginia. Fantastic. And uh, tell us a little bit about the church, whereabouts you meet. You said that it's grown a lot. Can you give us a, just a rough idea of, of, of what we could expect if we were to come along to Charlottesville? Yeah, so we've, we, uh, it, we're in a university of ta- a town, so it's the University of Virginia, which is kind of the home of Thomas Jefferson. And so it's a very eclectic, beautiful place that attracts tourists and different people, college students. And so it's an elite university within the United States. And so it brings a lot of different ideas. And, and so it's an eclectic church that we have a lot of people from that aren't native to Charlottesville. And so we have a lot of young families and young graduate students. So it's a great opportunity for us to interact with people of in the marketplace of ideas to talk about things of faith and, and Christ and how Christ is relevant in this post-Christian world that we live in. And so it's a very, we, we take seriously the apologetic component of explaining who Christ is and his historical reliability, his, the validity of faith in him. And so it's a really fun place to do ministry. And we've seen God do add hundreds and hundreds of people into the mix of the life of our church. And so it's a, it's a fun, interesting place to do ministry. Great, very good. And tell us, how does the church in the U.S. all the the way across the pond come to support um, a little church, although a budding church in in, in Stockport? Well, Matt Thompson and I had a mutual friend, if anyone in your church knows, Shane McKeska. He was (laughs) was a fellow Texan friend of mine. And so he got me connected to, to Matt and to John years and years ago. And so... And then as Shane moved along, just a, a deep friendship developed with, with Matt and myself. He's become a dear brother, someone I love dearly. And um, so we just developed kind of a like-minded heart and mindset. And so we just, I just, I want to work with people that I know and trust and, and believe in personally. And so it's, as he started off on this new church planting endeavor, we, we just were like, how can we help? We, cause we've been, where you guys are right now. And so yeah. the idea of us being thousands of miles away, it doesn't mean that we can't help financially or prayer or if necessary and helpful come over. And so whatever we can do, we're, we're excited and Fantastic. we love you guys and are thankful for what you're doing for sure. Yeah, that's great. And we've, uh, we've really appreciated uh, a couple of your guys coming across from, uh, from, from, from the States uh, over the last couple of summers to, to help us. So that's been great. Yeah. Um, we're going through um, some very interesting um, circumstances at the moment with, with the coronavirus, and uh, I know that's impacted on how ministers do ministry at the moment. Just take us through maybe uh, briefly how, how that's maybe impacted upon Charlottesville Community Church and how you, um, you do ministry at the moment. Yeah, it's so obviously as a church, we've had to innovate very quickly. And so whatever we've done, we've had to there's been so many things we've immediately had to stop doing and immediately do new things. And so it's been, it's, it's obviously been a a challenging time, but it's, it's just led to the, the idea of the church being even more decentralized and not built around a building. So as a church plant, like you guys, where it's, we haven't had our own building. You know, the church has never been a, about a place we've really been, had a great opportunity to adapt better than maybe some other churches have. Yeah. So, but pastorally, the, the challenge I've always been talking to our people about are, or 
are how do we make sure in the midst of this we never are succumbing to fear but always it's pushing us towards deeper faith what does it mean to love god more and to love neighbor more and to not go to the poles of thinking that some people are reckless and some people are faithless because i think that now as the the opportunity for division within the church exists for us to view people even in our church body differently and how they're responding to it so we've the whole time has been how do we respond to this pandemic and and with a faith perspective and not fear and how do we love one another well without saying well you're faithless or you're reckless and so Mm -hmm. pastorally those have been my ongoing challenges perpetually my talking points with people yeah so yeah okay um another um thing that has occurred over the last well, a couple of months, I can't, can't remember exactly now the, 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 the point in time uh, of the event, but the Black Lives Matter um, uh, movement. Um, I don't know whether as a church you've um, had opportunity or need to respond directly uh, to that um, in the way that you have done ministry or outreach or come alongside people. Yeah, it's, it's a very, it's, a, it's, it's been so complicated because you have this global pandemic Mm. and then you've had this layer on top of that of just, Mm. you know, if, if you know much of American history, you know, it's just racism is just embedded within Mm. the the story of our country. And even in Charlottesville with, you know, Thomas Jefferson being kind of the patriarch of our town and him writing the declaration of independence and but saying all men are created equal but all but 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 not black people yeah those they don't and so and we've had you know racial riots in the past and so the way we've handled it as a church is that i'm thankful of and it's also even a sadness of of, of the stories so we have a partnership we're mainly and mostly a white congregation we have way more asians than we do even uh black folks but we've we've so as we've thought about how do we care and how do we be about racial reconciliation from a gospel perspective, but we're mostly a white church, what do we do? And so, so we've reached out to a a historical African American church in, in town. And so we've really developed an incredible partnership with them. And so we've, we've done uh, good Friday services together. We've done outreach and service events in our community. And so we've talked through, and so we're, we've, you know, we, we, we haven't, we haven't done, you know, we haven't encouraged folks to join street protests. If you want to do that, do that, but do that from a perspective of everything that we do is through the lens of the gospel. Yeah. And so how do we, how the greatest need is for people is not just social justice where it's equality for everyone. The greatest need for everyone is for their hearts to be transformed Mm. uh, because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, so, so we do those, we, we act in a way, but it's always with a verbal witness of what people need the most. And so, but we've done that with an African American church in town that we've just really, really developed a wonderful relationship with. And so we've talked to our people like, Hey, we have systems in place to help you already. Yeah. And so I think that's what's been challenging for churches because even within churches, you have very divided. The church in the U.S. has not been on the same page about how to respond to it. So some have chased after kind of this social, if, and if I'm painting with the broadest of strokes, of maybe a social justice approach. And so we, we do everything just like everyone else. So we take to the streets and we get very angry. And there's other people that are like, all we do is we just speak the gospel and we just think that that'll solve everything. And so we're like, no, what do, what do we, how do we, you know, we don't do that with other issues. Just be like, oh, we just going to speak, but we do things, but we do things very Christ centered. And so yeah. that's been the encouragement that we've had with our people of like, yeah, we have to speak in this. This is the, the sin and the stain of our country historically. Yeah. Yeah. And so how do we, how do we not just ignore that, but how do we not get caught up and engage in how our culture has done it too? We ought to look different. And so yeah. 
so that's been the challenge that we've been oh, facing. That's really helpful to, to hear. That's uh, really encouraging to, to hear that um, you've taken that approach with a, with, a, with another church in, in the local community. Yeah. Great, yeah. So how can um, Christchurch Stockport be, be praying for you guys in Charlottesville um, at, at this time? You can, and, and thank you, you know, David and the church, the leadership. I've, I've always so encouraged when, when I'm reached out to and, and asked for how we can be prayed for, I'm grateful. And so I'm thankful for any prayers offered. And so I, I think you can pray for us as we regather in person. We had our first regathering recently and it went really well. But as, as you can imagine... As you can imagine, there's different thoughts on how to regather, when to regather. And so this is uncharted territory for everyone. Mm-hmm. So even for the leadership of our church. So you can pray for the, our elders and our leadership for wisdom and how we regather. But also you can pray for our people to, to, to be slow to draw hasty conclusions about things going on in our country. That we would take on a heart of humility and listening and um, the, with one another, I think would be really helpful. So pray for a continued unity in our church. We have that and we don't want to lose that. Yeah. And then I think you can pray for, lastly, that we would really be a gospel presence in our community, that the Great Commission is not on pause because of a global pandemic, that we know mm-hmm. that we are still to go and make disciples of all nations teaching to observe all the crisis commanded and baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's still valid and in effect. So, mm-hmm. so, so pray that we would do that in the creative ways in, in a time of, of limitation. So that would, I would be grateful for those prayers by all means. Great. Excellent. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll definitely be praying for you, Kyle. And uh, thanks much once again for your time. It's been really good speaking to you. Um, and, and Yes. Thank you. Thank you, church. Thank you for your love, your support, your partnership with us. And so, David, I'm grateful and then for your leadership as well. And so I'm thankful for you guys. Praise the Lord. Blessings upon you. Thank you very much. Take care.